In tonight's Top Gear, we test the Alfa Romeo that dares to be different. This is the Ford Escort, the bread and butter pudding of cars. Over the years, there have been many imitations, but basically, they're all the same. Then there's My Way by Frank Sinatra. Over the years, there have been many imitations, but basically, they're all the same. There's always someone out there, though, who can copy the original, but in such a way that it's barely recognisable. This is still my way, but Sid Vicious has given us something different, something wild. And this is still a three-door hatchback, but Alfa Romeo has given us something different, something really wild. the whole car you might call it you might call it ugly like a bread van but get close and you'll find that it's a wash with stunning little pieces of design look at the bonnet the way it curls round to give that sort of captain beaky look there's the groove down the side then there's the side windows with the chunk cut out of them to give a bigger glass area and look at the back the rear windscreen wiper describes an arc, so why shouldn't the rear window? And then look at the way that they've tapered those rear lights. It is fantastic. Praise be to God. At last, someone has dared to be different. Alfa Romeo, I salute you. And I hope Walter de Silva, the man who designed the 145, wins the lottery every single week for the rest of his life. You deserve it, mate. He especially deserves it because there's no price to pay for this, this wild body. <clears throat> Inside it feels light and spacious, partly because of these big windows, but also because it is big. And clever too, by scooping away the dashboard there, the passenger can sit much further forward than is usual. And that means that kids can get into and out of the back without having to tilt the seat forward. And then... There's the driving position. For once in an Italian car, you don't have to be shaped like an ape to get comfortable. Now, you might be looking at the dash and thinking, yes, I can see the engine and mobiliser and the electric windows and the airbag and the stereo and so on, but that plastic looks awfully cheap. And I'd have to agree, it does, in a £20,000 car. But this 145 costs less than £11,000. That is especially good value for money when you remember what the Alfa Romeo badge actually stands for. You might think of BMW or Ferrari as having a good pedigree, but they are strays and mongrels compared to Alfa. Enzo Ferrari began his career there, and just before and after the war, their race cars were so dominant, the drivers would pull into the pits on the last lap so the cars could be polished. Then they'd look smart as they crossed the line. And they're still at it. Last year in the British Touring Car Championship, Alpha was like Pavarotti at a Doncaster Operatic Society rehearsal. So with the 145, you get all that history, good looks, plenty of practicality and lots of equipment, all for less than £11,000. It is by far and away the best car in its class. Except for one small thing. It isn't by far and away the best car on the road. The trouble is that under the skin, it's a mishmash. It's basically a Fiat Tipo with some alphabets nailed to it. However, at least the engine is bespoke Alfa Romeo. It's the super smooth boxer unit. Smooth it may be, but sporty it is not. 
I only have 103 brake horsepower at my disposal and 0 to 60 takes over 11 seconds. It's noisy too, and there's no point going for the more expensive 1.7 litre 16 valve version, because that still isn't what you'd call fast, and it is even noisier. Now don't get me wrong, the 145 is no worse than most hatchbacks, and you have to say with this speed-sensitive power steering, it's actually better than a lot of them. It's just that because it's an Alfa Romeo, because of this badge, I was expecting a bit more stuff, a bit more pizzazz, a bit more spunk. I was also disappointed to see the other day that some big Alpha 164s have been recalled because of rust. I mean, rust! It makes all their claims about bulletproof reliability for this new car a bit shallow. Couple that to average performance and too much noise, and you might imagine the 145 is destined for the same fate as Sid Vicious. But when all is said and done, the 145 is the little hatchback that I'd choose. I mean, let's face it, who needs blood and guts performance from an urban runaround that spends most of its life stuck in a traffic jam? And if you are worried about this reliability question, I have a solution. When you go to buy the car, simply say to the salesman, if it goes wrong within the next three years, can I come round to your house and burn it down? Make him put his house where his mouth is.